going to present an unusual lesion of a gentleman who had a mass on the undersurface of his foot for probably over 20 years, he learned to walk on his toes but had grown. An MRI uh, basically showed that it was a complex vascular lesion with a large pseudoaneurysm. There was no history of trauma that we could elucidate. Differential diagnosis, was this a fistula or was this um, an arterial venous malformation? So we did do an elective angiogram. You can see his posterior tibial artery is huge. There's this jet into the aneurysm. Um, there was a similar jet you could see off the anterior tibial artery. Um, so we opted uh, to consult orthopedics and plastic surgery, uh, but initially uh, we chose to go ahead and embolize some of the branches coming off the anterior tibial artery preemptively. We did selective catheterization of that plantar branch, and initially we placed intercoils. These are uh, six millimeter diameter intercoils, which are being placed directly into that feeding vessel. You actually start the coil inside the aneurysm and then pull back really into position. Um, and so we used uh, several six millimeter coils and then followed that up with some four millimeter coils uh, to pack this internally. You can see after the initial coils, there was still some flow going through this. We opted to go back and uh, pack with the three and the four millimeter coils at this point. You can see this coil is really a, a little long. Uh, to get there, we were using a direction microcatheter. Uh, we had uh, did this through the left groin using the up and over technique to get to his right leg. Uh, the sheath was placed in the popliteal artery. Uh, we oversized the sheath using a seven French sheath so we could inject even with the catheter was in place. And we used a direction microcatheter inside the branches to uh, deploy it. And you can see it looks like it's getting on its way to occlusion. A uh, mistake I made here is I should have backed it up with onyx right there and then. Uh, but we opted to go over onto the posterior tibial at that point in time. Um, that hairpin bend proved not to be any issue. I mean, the advantage of this situation is that there is, uh, uh, you know, the vessels are huge. So we tried to cross that really pretty easily. This patient also had some lipidermatosclerosis, <clears throat> presumably from the venous hypertension, which exists. So here we can see the, the catheter, again, the, uh, the, uh, again, using a direction microcatheter. <clears throat> we uh, opted to go ahead and deploy coils. These are the first coils, again, six millimeter diameter coils, which we're using. <clears throat> so once again, uh, there was enough landing zone here, nice long length, so it was relatively safe without risking uh, interfering with other branches. Again, we started off with combination of five and six millimeter intercoils and pack them uh, with three millimeter coils. Nice thing about these intercoils is they have a lock on them so you can deploy them. And here it looked like it was occluded. Once again, if I was to do this again, I would immediately put onyx in once these coils are deployed because we actually will see, even though it looks good here, of course, the patient is anticoagulated, and we came back with some flow through both of these. We shot the perineal artery uh, just to make sure there's nothing that we no communicating branches. And you can see that the uh, one of the terminal branches of the perineal filled the posterior tibial, but there's no direct filling of the uh, AVM itself. So we went back and reshot the anterior tib because in the perineal looked like some, there's still some filling. And here you can see there is a proximal branch which is filling it. Again, as you start taking out these branches, amazing capability of finding alternate pathways by which you can fill the pseudoaneurysm. So we opted to go into that and we did deploy some coils. We also put some onyx in there. The onyx was also deployed through the direction a microcatheter. Uh, here you can see one of the challenges with the coil. We almost lost it back up into the feeding vessel. We're having trouble disconnecting it here, but eventually disconnected. Um, and you can see that branch that's filling it also is now occluded. Um, so having learned a lesson, we did opt to go ahead and put some onyx in there. That's the onyx that's been injected. Now this is speeded up. Uh, the entire video is speeded up really for the sake of making sure we can cover all the content, but this is a slow and steady process. Not something that you'd really use unless you've used it before. It's only approved for neurovascular use but as in, in my opinion, still the agent of choice for peripheral arterial venous malformations. What you're seeing here is if you use 
a roadmap function that you can actually subtract out the old onyx so you see the new onyx going it's a very useful technique and here you can see that we've still got some flow coming down through that main branch of the anterior tibial artery and from the posterior tip so we're to go back into the posterior tibial and then again uh, back up these coils by injecting some onyx and what we're using this roadmap function you can see the onyx sneaking its way through the coil and into the side branches Now one of the challenges we had here is because we are, we're so remote uh, down the leg, uh, intermittently we're having a problem uh, using a quick cross catheter along with the direction micro catheter. We actually had to cut the uh, quick cross so that the uh, direction would actually protrude out at the end of it. Nice thing about the quick cross, it's got three different radiopaque markers so you can actually know where you're cutting uh, the, the length of the catheter by looking at the, the markers. But here you can see onyx going into the a distal posterior tib, um, probably the malleolar artery at that level actually. And now it's completely occluded. And again, with the experience we'd had, we opted to just go back and uh, reaccess that um, plantar blanch off the anterior tibial artery. So we continued to inject onyx into that plantar branch of the anterior tibial artery. Again, using road mapping, you can see where the most recent onyx injection here, it's actually basically what's happened is it's blocked off that side branch. We've allowed that to harden, and now this is uh, pushing it into other branches and inside the coils. Now you can see it going back along that side branch. So when that happens, you just stop. You can actually aspirate a little bit, stops it tracking quite as far, and then you sit and wait for it to solidify. That's really what we're doing now, is just waiting on this solidifying. Usually leave it for one, two minutes for that to actually happen. And then we can, uh, continue to inject, and it usually follows a, a separate pathway. In other words, the plug which has been formed pushes the onyx down in a different direction. And you can see the plug coming up the main feeding branch to the malformation. Now we've actually moved that microcatheter. Uh, once you inject onyx, you really can't inject dye through it again. You have to take it out. That's the disadvantage we're injecting now at the level of the popliteal artery. You can see there's yet another branch which is feeding it. But at that point in time, we'd spent quite a bit of time both embolizing this and with onyx, so we opted to put one more injection of onyx and trying to take out that other feeding branch. But now you can see the microcatheter is getting pretty close to the axial circulation, so you gotta be really careful injecting the onyx at that point. And after onyx injection, it's not filling nearly as well, and we opted to stop. Final injection was done at the level of palpiteal, you can see most of it's gone. These are an example of the um, devices and the onyx that we were using uh, to complete this case. Thank you.